Sometimes I get lonely and pass out. Um, a lot of y'all are dope. You just quit too soon. And uh, you don't have foresight. You need to have foresight if you're going to do anything. Uh, and you got to ultimately just have belief that uh, if it doesn't happen today, it's going to happen tomorrow. Um, but you got to have foresight and you have to have patience. And patience isn't just waiting. Patience is like being positive while waiting. <laughs> You can be pissed off while you're waiting and just furious and like that's probably gonna lead you to quit so i see that some people are irritated that i've called severely mentally capable rappers who have put themselves in a position in their life that they can even be garnering million dollar deals um idiots because they are choosing to not self-educate even though they'll educate themselves on Patex. um so it's a problem that I'm calling those people idiots. However, those people get on Instagram and call you broke. They put up videos yelling at the camera, who's ever watching them, that you're broke, you're a bum, y'all can't fuck with me, y'all are broke, get your money up, tell your boyfriend he's a bitch, all this crazy shit, but y'all are okay with that. Um, y'all are bitch made. Y'all are just bitch made. Um, the lies are always gonna be easier to handle. The truth is gonna make you kinda check yourself or it's gonna make you pissed off. Uh, I'm not really here to comfort you, you feel me? I'm not here to coddle your fucking fragile ass, uh, you know, security and sense of self. Like, too fucking bad. I'm here to give you... The reality is I'm trying to prevent artists from fucking themselves. Um, that's it. That's it. And, you know, I'm trying to make sure that kids watching and looking up to... Um, rappers in this genre or whatever i'm trying to i'm trying to let them know and separate for them the real from the fake because sometimes it's hard to separate uh the real from the fake when you're on the outside looking in so i'm just trying to let y'all know like you know everything's not always what it seems a million dollars isn't really a million dollars and self-educate yourself on the business that you're getting into as opposed to only educating yourself on the perks that the money from the business gives you you feel me it's like if you're not on the inside, then your opinion on what's going on on the inside is not validated. I'm on the inside giving you all live updates from the field. So you can either listen to the advice from someone who literally made it and is successful trying to give the gems back or don't. And honestly, if I made it so that one kid, literally, if I just made it so that one kid decides to self-educate himself on a deal prior to signing it, if I influence one kid to do that, then mission accomplished. Yo, and to the upcoming artists, right? You gotta create a vast catalog. I'm talking to the kids in the basement with like no followers. Like, you gotta create a vast catalog. This whole like being so stingy and like scared to drop that one song. Like, you gotta stop with that shit. Like the bad songs and beats or whatever that I was making when I was fucking 14 and fucking 16, 17 or whatever. Like, that didn't stop shit. All it did was help me get to the good song. Cause you gotta get that shit out of your system. And when you're not famous and you have a fucking thousand followers, no one gives a fuck what you drop, bro. Like, no one cares. Like, if you drop some shit and it's like, and it doesn't pop, like, that's not going to end your career. You don't even have a career yet. Like, it doesn't matter. So I say all that to just say, get the fuck out of your own way. A lot of people are too in their own head. And you're fucking up your own momentum. You're fucking up, uh, like, just the, the process and the journey because you're you're hindering your own movement. You got to get the fuck out of your way. Uh, when I was coming up, I was not one to hold music uh, because I figured if I fuck with it, there's definitely at least one person in the world who fucks with it too. And that one person can, can be the start of 10 more people. So you got to do that layer brick a day and build the Great Wally of Fan Base mentality. You ask anyone, like, the end goal and, like, the biggest aspirations, it's always, you know, in the future, I see myself owning a this. In the future, <laughs> it never comes. Just right? do Every, it. Like, you put, everyone puts things off. It's like, to me, right, uh, it's almost like bills, you know? People put off bills until they knock on your door and say mm -hmm. there's a lien on your house or whatever, and, like, now we're taking Or cars. flip their switch and it's off. Like, it's and there's no water. And then you start moving with a sense of urgency. It's the same thing, though. People put off life. You know, because if you if you tell somebody you're going to die tomorrow, they would all of a sudden value their life and time mm -hmm. much more. Just like bills, oh, I'll put it off, put it off, put it off. But when they come knock on the door and or when your water's off, then you start moving correctly. Mm -hmm. That's how you should have been moving regardless. 
So I try and just keep that in my head. Like, I'm not putting off my life. I'm doing this shit now. I'm alive now. I'm healthy now. I'm young now. I'm doing everything. How do you know? What's one of the biggest mistakes you think that an, art, an independent artist can avoid? The biggest mistakes an independent artist could avoid? Relinquishing independence. That's the biggest mistake. I think, um, I think you giving away your masters and you giving away your publishing, you're fucking high. You feel me? I think if you have a... If you have an Instagram and a Twitter and you have an in-home studio, which chapter one is making an in-home studio, owning the means of operation is the biggest thing. The fact that people are still paying for studio time is insane to me. Uh, but relinquishing the independence, that's the biggest mistake you can make. Like, you can go make a tune core and get paid 100K a week as opposed to a label who pays you semi-annual and that's if you're recouped and that's if you trust that they're not fucking bullshitting you so come on owning the means of operation is step one uh to this whole trying to blow up as an artist thing and that just means putting the studio in your house um instead of having to pull up to a studio and working on other people's time because they may not have availability they're spending unnecessary amount of money um, and that money that you end up spending over the course of six months a year whatever is enough to put that same thing in your in your house in your bedroom in your basement and when you're trying to get on which is the time that you need to spend the most in the gym practicing whatever you can't afford for that shit to be 30 minutes away and you got to be calling ahead and making sure they have availability you got to you got to put the gym in your house if you're trying to get good at basketball what do you do you put the basketball going in your driveway so it's the same concept it's like you got to put the gym in your house um and you'd be surprised how much money and how quick you could save up 2500 to 5k which is really all you need um you know you just have to cut you just have to cut back you know and it's called sacrifices <laughs> you feel me like so maybe you don't go out nearly as often and maybe you cut back on alcohol and maybe you cut back on weed and you cut back on uh, on trying to buy the new shoes every time they come out and all this shit. you'd be surprised how quick you can have an extra 2500 or 5k if you literally itemize your bullshit spending throughout the year shit you don't need you'd be surprised how quick you can get up to 2500 and 5k so the reality is you gotta just ask yourself what you really want and some people need to stop lying to themselves because if you're not down to struggle for a little bit for what you want then you really don't want it that bad you need to stop lying to the world and especially stop lying to yourself and you know what maybe you gotta go get the job at mcdonald's or walmart whatever job they try to shit on uh, maybe you got to get both. Maybe you got to get three jobs. But, you know, whatever it is, you can't be too prideful to go do that because that might help you get closer to the $2,500, $5,000 mark, especially when you compound uh, that with cutting back on certain shit. But you can't be too prideful to do that. You got to be playing chess and you got to have foresight. You can't you can't allow yourself to fall into the space that um, every disposition in life is permanent. There's no position in life that's permanent. You feel me? So... Shit might look fucked up right now. Yeah, I'm working at McDonald's, Walmart, whatever. But you know what? It's because I got a plan. I'm playing chess. I'm stacking up. I'm saving money. Because boom, once I get this 2500 I'm putting the studio in my house. And then I'm hitting the ground running. And it's a wrap. Um, but you can't be too prideful to do shit like that, you know? If you want something, you got to be down to make sacrifices. It's just that simple. See, wish is different than desire. I don't desire to have a six-pack. If I desire to have a six-pack, I would get a six-pack. You know, I desired to blow up as a musician and as an artist, which is why I did. I wish I had a six pack. I wish. That'd be cool. I wish. But that's where it stops. It's just a wish. And so a lot of people, a lot of people need to keep it real with themselves. A lot of people need to keep it real with themselves. You don't desire shit. You wish for it. Damn, I wish I had money. Damn, I wish I had this job. Damn, I wish I had this girl. Damn, I wish I was a bigger artist. Yeah, you wish for it. But the reason why you don't have it is because you don't desire it. And so stop blaming other people. Blame your own lack of desire. Like, you don't want it that bad. You just wish for it, but you don't desire it. I try to tell artists that you're the one running the ship. You're, 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 this is your show. Everyone else works for you. So don't get it twisted in thinking that, like, there's artists who their managers get paid like the money goes to their manager's accounts and then the manager pays the artist it's like you realize your manager works for you right it's like the money should be going to you so it's it's this very like 
backseat uh, position that a lot of artists take. And my whole thing is like, look, everyone around you works for you. Use them as resources, ask I questions, so. and never get it fucked up. They're replaceable. You're not. You know, you're you're you. You're the artist. No. So look, I know I say it a lot, but it's just it's it's something I'm just passionate about. And I wish every artist would wake up. Um, record labels are billionaires off of just selling the masters, not the publishing, not the merch, not the touring. Literally, just the masters, y'all's music. And the reality is that, uh, you know. The the crumbs of your own bread that are being given to y'all are so minuscule compared to how much is actually being grossed. But since it's still a good amount and like a lot, you know, depending on how you look at things, it just it, it, it keeps you fed long enough to not ask questions. But it's insane, man. It's insane. It's really, really insane. Like. I just encourage every artist to to be independent and see how much money is really in selling music. Like, that's the number one. Because the narrative that you have to run around and do all these things outside of the music to actually get money is bullshit. And it's super outdated. The number one lucrative thing to do in the music industry is to own music and sell. That's it. Like, labels are billionaires off of that. They don't tour. They don't sell merch. They don't have even the publishing. You feel me? They just own the masters and sell it, and they get billions of dollars. And so I encourage all of y'all, go, all y'all major label artists, ask your label how much money you're grossing uh, a year off of streaming. And then when they tell you whatever the fuck they tell you, don't believe them and hire an auditor. You have the right to audit your label, and that's what y'all should be doing. Because the reality is there's a ton of fucking money in this streaming shit. There's a ton of money in owning music and selling it. And, you know, I, I don't... I, if y'all really knew how much... And the other thing is I encourage y'all major label artists to go ask your label specifically to send you the amount of money you've grossed foreign off of streams and what you've netted. Because y'all's deals are domestic deals. Meaning when you sign to RCA or Atlantic, those are domestic deals. Overseas, there is no uh, fucking Atlantic It's it's or Columbia. It's, they just have parent companies. It's just Sony or Universal, uh, so on and so forth. With little different divisions. You can't go do a deal with each fucking territory. You feel me? So you're getting absolute bullshit rates for overseas streaming income. Terrible rate. Now, if you're independent, you just get all that money. You feel me? You get all that money. And hip hop and music in general is global now more than ever. And those, um, the, the foreign, the amount of money being missed out on foreign streaming income for major label artists is unbelievable because the deals are outdated. So you're getting shitty royalty rates because you can't go do a deal with each fucking individual country. You just do some blanket Sony deal for this territory and Universal. Because there is no, like I said, there is no individual shit out there like that. So you're just getting these terrible royalty rate deals. So go ask your label. I really encourage y'all to ask your label to get the statements for your foreign streaming income. The gross. And then when they give it to you, audit them. You have the right. Audit them. Um, it's insane how much money is being missed out on due to this uh, exploitation and outdated terms. You feel me? Including the 15% distribution fee that labels take off the top as if they're doing any distributing. There's no physical copies being pressed out like that. Anymore. And and if you're not on the inside of the industry, I don't care about your opinion on this, to be honest. You have no clue what you're talking about. You just read shit and hear about shit and... You don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm not, this is not for y'all. I don't care about y'all's opinion on it. I don't care if you, no, nah, well, this is not, I don't give a fuck. Shut up. It's not for you. You know what I'm saying? It's really not. Um, but for the ones inside of this shit, I encourage y'all to ask for the statements. I encourage y'all to really see how much money you are grossing and then how much they're giving you. It's insane, man. It is insane how much money is really in streaming music. You don't have to do all this other 
fucking extracurricular shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you can sit at your house, sell your music online, and run up 100 M's a year. It is a fact. Go ask the labels. Um, the good news is that you don't have to listen to me, and y'all could um, do whatever the fuck you want, you know? Um, I'm just going to lead by example, and at some point in life, it may not be next year, in five years, ten years, but at some point in life, I'm, I'm running up 100 M's in a year. Uh, strictly off of streams that's it it's a volume game it's that simple labels make billions of dollars because of the volume of catalog that they own so it's a volume game so that's the point that's going to be the reality and so um you know and i don't mean gross i mean net i mean net 100 mil so I'm not falling into the trap of trying to run around and do 78 different things outside the music like a maniac just to get some money when the biggest, most lucrative cash crop in the music business is owning music and selling it. So, like I said, ask your labels for the statements and then audit them. And last thing, super important, I don't want y'all to think that money is the only motivator and why is it all about money? It's not, it's about not being exploited and it's about not getting taken advantage of and not having your art and uh, creations taken advantage of. That's it. It's about not being exploited. Very simple, very simple. Um, and labels are exploiting artists with shitty outdated deals. It's that simple. Um, okay, the glasses are on, so it's, it's a different level at this point. Um, no, I'm kidding. But I wanted to talk about marketing real quick. I know I keep saying like, oh, last thing, last thing, but uh, I tend to always have something else to say. So let's talk about marketing. Um, there's a lot of artists and people that have made comments and asked questions like, uh, you know, oh, your come up is great, Russ. Yeah, sure, but you're hiding something. What, what was the marketing budget? How much money were you spending per song? And I don't believe this shit. And Nah, they, you're not telling us the whole story. There was marketing. There had to be marketing, marketing budget. But it's like, holy fuck. First of all, I take it as a compliment because I've actually done something and generated such success that you, it's actually unbelievable. Um, so thank you, first and foremost. Second of all, the best marketing for your music is it being great. Harsh pill to swallow for artists because all y'all think your shit is great and it's everyone else that's the problem. But most of the time it's you. Um... So the best marketing is having great music, putting it out consistent and effectively. Meaning when I was putting out 11 mixtapes, that was not an effective way to put out my music because no one's trying to hear fucking mixtapes and albums from an artist that they don't give a fuck about. So I had to switch up how I was putting out songs. That's when I moved to a song a week because I felt, which every artist should feel like this, that the music was good enough. And I was just putting it out wrong. So I was like, all right, you know what? I believe in my music, so let me change up the approach. And that's when I moved to a song a week because I saw everyone's down to listen to the first song on every album. So I was like, cool, I'll do a song a week. Um, so that's what I did. There was no money being spent on any marketing. I didn't even have any connections to spend. I don't. I didn't even know where to begin if I wanted to with that. You know, I was just putting out a song a week and what I was doing was I was staying on social media, very active. I was putting up uh, selfie videos of me in the studio, singing my R&B songs, lip syncing them and shit, like, you know, while the song's playing. Um, shit like that, man, just uh, staying consistent. And like I said, the music was great. It's that simple. Like when you go look back at 2015, when I dropped Losing Control and What They Want and Too Many and Pull The Trigger, those are multi-platinum hits that I dropped. And they weren't multi-platinum because of the marketing, they're multi-platinum because first and foremost, they're great songs, you know? Um, and that's what started to get me a fan base was first the music was great, then it was consistent. And third, I was putting it out in a digestible, effective way. One song at a time, week by week. And that method worked back then. Simple as that. Um, and the best marketing for it, like I said, was the music and the approach. Um, but I understand why people ask that question because nowadays there's so many different avenues of marketing and TikTok and this back then there wasn't like that you know it just wasn't like that I didn't even I didn't even have the connections to milk those avenues if there was avenue I didn't even know you know what I mean so um the the, the best marketing was just great music and the approach you feel me so the reality is that labels are not gonna offer you any. And the reason why I bring up the marketing thing is because a lot of people's responses whenever I talk about labels and shit is like, yeah, but the marketing money, man, they're spending so much money. 
It's like, listen, bro. At the end of the day, I fully believe when music is great and when it's put out consistently and effectively, a fan base will sniff you out online, especially now more than ever when everyone is online. It's like, it's that simple. And if you have been doing it for a long time, still don't have a fan base, you need to just keep it real with yourself and go back to the drawing board and analyze what you've been doing. And it might be you. It might be the music. It might be you're putting it out incorrectly. It might be the branding. It might be this. It might be that. So it's like, you know, artists just have such a crazy ego thing and it's never y'all's fault. And it's never our fault because I'm part of that community too, you know, but I've, I've learned to, you know, realize that sometimes it, and to tie all that back into the label shit is that labels marketing you nowadays are going to be, you know, putting up money for music videos um, and radio you know, which you don't need them to do either of those things for you. And it's like, yeah, they can run TikTok campaigns and do all this shit, whatever. The reality is that if you have a fucking Instagram and you have a Twitter and you have dope music and like, you know, you're a personable person or whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Like you can generate a fan base on your own. Like you got to realize the world we're living in right now made it possible for everyone to make it. Everything is connected, everything is accessible. There's no reason why you can't be the biggest artist in the world if you get your shit together, you know? Like, it's that simple and that goes for all of us, you feel me? Yeah, I, I just believe in the music and a consistent, effective. To any of my artists out there, especially the up and coming ones, especially the up and coming ones. But honestly, really not even just Really, not even just the. And I guess this kind of applies to like everyone, but um, freedom is like the absolute uh, like goal, and um, I just mean like freedom of thought, freedom of fear. Uh, like when I was when I was coming up and trying to get on, right. I didn't, I literally didn't possess a single ounce of fear or fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I didn't give a fear or a fuck, you know, uh, because there was no one watching me. I had no expectations, you know, so I was operating complete, completely freely. Uh, I was making whatever I wanted and putting it out whenever I wanted, however I wanted. And that's why I was able to get so much because I gave so much. And what happens is as an artist, when you get into the industry, um, it becomes very serious. You know, the industry takes the fun away because now it's about, now it's business. It's the music business, you feel me? So now it's first week numbers and sales and this and all that shit really doesn't fucking matter at all. The reality is like, if like my my goal right my goal is to make as much meaningful music as possible and share it with as many people as possible as often as possible that's it that's it anything else is literally just ego industry bullshit like no one really cares about first week numbers. No one really cares about billboard charts. That shit is for that shit is that shit is for the industry to sort of like fucking uh put a number, engage people's art. It's like that shit like what? You can't you can't value my shit like that. And I and I as an artist and we as artists can't allow that shit to uh dictate our value that shit is ridiculous it's ridiculous like my impact is so much realer than numbers you feel me like <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> you know what i mean it's like a billboard chart and sales can't tell me how impactful my message is 
you know there's a lot of like there's a lot of numbers first of all the numbers are fucking fabricated anyway you can't even believe the shit and second of all there's a lot of bullshit that has a lot of numbers who cares you know who cares like impact impact is what it's about impact and influence like are you influencing people positively like what did you do with your time here like in a lot of these artists they don't stand for shit that's why no one has a problem with them that's how you know they don't stand for shit if no one has a problem with you i can tell you don't stand for shit because if you actually said how you felt you wouldn't you wouldn't just have like uh you know love from all angles and shit like that say what you want about kanye but kanye always spoke his truth and kanye stands for shit and he says how he feels and that's why obviously with that you're going to get people that don't fuck with you and whatever but at least he stands for shit like i know with the time that i've already had here on earth and in this space i've influenced people positively because i stuck my neck out and said some shit that i really feel and i could have kept it quiet and just fucking entertained y'all and and i'd probably be a quote-unquote bigger artist as far as the numbers but i wouldn't have a bigger impact you feel me i wouldn't my impact comes from my fearlessness of Saying how I feel and standing for something You know what I mean Like influence and impact bro Like what are some of these people fucking talking about The music has no fucking substance in it That's why that shit doesn't fucking like Stick You feel me Cause it's just entertainment It's just fucking fluff and filler entertainment That shit is not talking about anything There's no real message Tell me the real message With a lot of this music that's coming out What's the message? I know the messages in my music. I, I, I'm a fucking... My music is a is a fucking like walking self-help book. That's why I wrote a self-help book. And that's why I was even able to turn my music into chapters in a self-help book. Because the messages have always been there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know anyone else that really fucking... Like, look how, look how the law of attraction and manifesting and all that shit is now like mainstream. Who the fuck was talking about manifest before in the mainstream... In the mainstream music industry, who the fuck was really making songs about manifest and really talking this law of attraction shit and really talking this spiritual shit? Nah, come on, bro. Come on. That's called impact. That's called influence. And I, in, in regards to people who want to give me that credit, the reality is that I gave the world and I left the world better off than how I found it. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I did. And that's what I do with my platform. <laughs> you feel me? That's what I do. I influence positively. I don't know what the fuck some of this music is about. It's not about shit. There's no positive message. You know, most of the messages are self-destructive messages. That's like, because that's what America loves to watch is train wrecks. America is obsessed with entertainment. What's the most entertaining shit to watch is a train wreck. That's why labels fucking eat that self-destructive music up. Because train wrecks make more money. <laughs> you know what I mean? First shot of the night. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. Shit is crazy. Shit is crazy. No one's saying shit. No one's talking about shit. I know my shit is like... I turn up too and have fun too in certain songs and whatever. Like, you know. But for the most part, man, my shit always has a message. Like, and I always sneak in a self-belief and you can do it too undertone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or I'm trying to fucking let people know that your, your depression and sadness isn't alone. You know? So it's like I, I, I like I'm proud of what I've done with the time that I've had here. 
and with the space that like that I've been allowed to occupy because I influence people positively. That's why the book is like the most proud thing I have, to be honest, because that shit is forever. And me talking and just trying to like uh, just help people is on file. Like the audiobook I did it. That's me saying my words. You know what I mean? Like that's the realest shit of all time. That's the realest shit of all time. I didn't tell anyone to fucking self-destruct. I told people to self-improve. Like, I told people to self-improve. <laughs> you feel me? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know too many people right now who their main message is to self-improve. I really don't. Because that shit doesn't really, that shit doesn't sell. That's why my shit was a glitch in the matrix. I, they wouldn't have let me in if they had a choice. I, I barge my way in. By force I kick the fucking door down 80 songs in a row every week They're not trying to hear this positive Self-improvement shit They're trying to hear some self-destructive shit Because that shit is entertaining Because most people in real life are self-destructing And most people are miserable That's why miserable music It, it will always be big Because happy music is offensive <laughs> You know what I mean? You feel me? Like it's, it's really crazy. And that makes you really think about what we're doing out here. <laughs> it's nuts, man. But I'm going to just keep this shit going. I'm going to keep this self-improvement talk going. I'm making Chomp 2 right now. I'm almost finished with it. Um, but yeah, man. People just don't be talking about shit. That wasn't even why I got on here. I was trying to tell people about be free with your thought. And be free how you move And don't let this industry And don't let whatever industry you're in Or, or, or just whatever barriers people try to put on your life and, and, and rules and shit Don't let that shit fucking cripple you and, and, and imprison you You know, being a prisoner to perception is the worst, bro For real Scott Store is a legend The reason why I started making beats, man I appreciate it I appreciate all the work that we have And we always make something fucking classic and all that shit is about to come out soon, bro. I'm about to go on a fucking... I'm about to go on a fucking run. But yeah, man. I just encourage everyone to... Um, to, to operate fully out of your truth. Really do what you want to do. That's the only way you're going to be fulfilled. You're not, it's, you're going to be miserable if you are living in fear. Yes, my stomach just grabbed. You're going to be miserable if you're living in fear, if you're scared of what people think and, and that's crippling you and handicapping you and hindering you. You know what I mean? Like you can't, bro. You can't. It's easier said than done. I know. I get it. I've been there. I battle with that all the time. But it's like at the end of the day, when you're constantly trying to people please, you never end up even pleasing yourself. You know? And it's like, that shit is no way to live. I don't care what industry you're in. That's no way to live. You know? It doesn't have to be the music business. It could just be in life. You know? You're so focused on making everyone else happy. Are you happy? You're turning yourself inside out. It, for people that one probably don't even give a fuck about you too, it's like now you're fucked up. Now you're miserable. Great, they're happy, but now you're miserable. <laughs> you know? Fuck that. 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 Fuck that, bro. And it's like this industry, if you allow it, makes you take this shit way too fucking serious. This shit is not fucking serious. It's music we're making. It's serious because of the message and the platform, but it doesn't need to be fucking corporated the fuck out and everything about numbers and fuck that what the fuck i'm here to make hard ass songs and put them out and do shows in between and repeat 
and 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 do that whenever I want. I'm not following y'all's schedule. I'm not doing none of that. They got everyone just like y'all got to drop on Fridays. Fuck y'all. How about no? How about how about I'm me, and I'm gonna drop on whatever day the fuck I want. Because that's what I can do. That's the beauty of independence is freedom. I can drop at Tuesday at 3 p.m. You know what I mean? I could upload an album tonight. <laughs> you feel me? Like, I'm about to really just embrace the freedom. Run directly at the fear of perception. Because I refuse to allow that shit to cripple me. And I refuse, I refuse to allow the, the uh, industry shackles in the make-believe rules... Block what I'm doing. <laughs> the fuck? I'm me. I do whatever the fuck I want, whenever I want. <laughs> that's like, that's how I've always been. So, I'm gonna just keep doing it. I'm gonna keep doing it. And, like I said, it's really just about influencing and impacting the world positively if you have the ability to speak to a lot of people. People be getting this platform with millions of people and do nothing with it. Do nothing with it. They don't fucking leave behind nothing. Like, they don't They, they don't have... They, what's your message? What's your message? What the fuck did you even influence? Or did you just give us some entertaining music for two years? You know what I mean? Like, what is that? What is that? How dismissive of the platform? People with some shit to say... Would kill to be in a position to have the platform that some of these artists are wasting. They're not saying shit. There's no message. It's crazy. There's no message. That shit is just fucking court jester entertainment, a lot of this shit. And it's self-destructive. It's self-destructive messages. That shit is crazy, man. You listen to too much of that shit, and that shit sinks into your subconscious. Your shit is just negative, bro. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that. So you want to chomp two? Drop chomp two. Right? It's not. It's not done. And it's like coming down to the wire because I got to deliver this soon because I want to drop it soon. Um, it's not done. I'm waiting on. Um, I'm waiting on Lil' Last Bottle. That's not a bottle. It's, it's my shot glass from Morocco or wherever the fuck. This is my... Oh, I know. Now it's like super cool. Fuck out of here. Um, Shamsu's just not done. So <laughs> I've, I still got one more song to make like on my end, but everything else, I'm waiting on like three or four more verses. The verses I have on it are out of control. Out of control. Out of control. Her, my boy, was good. Yeah, I mean, I'm just here to give y'all all my music, man. That's it. I make too much music. The other shit I realized, and this is what artists, if any artists are watching, put your fucking music out. Put your music out. You're doing yourself no service and for any content creators whether it's music whether it's painting put your shit out otherwise you are admitting and accepting that you have wasted your time if i'm sitting on fucking 95 songs unreleased as of right now those 95 songs and 95 studio sessions were a waste of time and 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 if you're an artist or if you're whatever kind of creator if you are sitting there wondering like Damn, I should be further ahead in my career, whatever the fuck it is. But you are sitting on a hundred pieces of content and shit like that. It's like how, you have yourself to blame. Get the fuck out of your way. Because maybe if you put out those a hundred things you're sitting on, your career would be way further along. But if you never share your work, right? Then how are you supposed to even get the fruits of your labor if you never share your labor? You can't complain about, oh, I don't have enough fruit. And you're not sharing your labor. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make any sense. So it's like, 
I, I had the epiphany last night. Like, me and Boo just had a fucking crazy conversation. And it's like, I'm about to just let all this shit fly. You're not worried about people getting tired of your music? No. If you're a fan of mine, if you're an actual fan of mine, you're not going to get tired of it because my shit's incredible. But if you're not a fan, if you're just like stopping by for a second because you just think I look good or you just like, or like you're just here because like you saw some shit on TikTok or whatever the fuck, who gives a fuck? Move along. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like whatever. But the ones who really fuck with me know. I'm a massive fan of Drake. I'm a massive fan of Kanye. I'm a massive fan of J. Cole. You think I'm going to complain if they decide to put out 40 songs next year instead of 12? Why would I complain? That would be lit. Are you kidding? Like, I'm a, I'm because I'm a real fan of those people. And at the end of the day, this shit is bigger than me. And I would be naive to think that of the 95 songs I'm sitting, I'm sitting on 95 songs and two albums. Of the 95 songs and two albums I'm sitting on, I would be naive to think that at least not one of them is going to change someone's life. You feel me? And influence somebody positively. At least I'd be naive. And then if you want to do the ego shit, da, 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 I'd be naive to think that not, at least one of them of the 95 wouldn't go fucking crazy and be a hit and do it. Come on. I'd be naive to think that. So I'm in my own way. Most artists are in their own way. Your best song is sitting on your fucking computer waiting for you to get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's the reality. But fear of perception and well, what are they going to think if, if I just drop this? And But like, what if it's not on Billboard? And then you fucking boom. Now you're literally paralyzed by your own fear and by your own ego. It's crazy. I'm not about to be paralyzed by my ego and my fear. Fuck that. What the fuck? None of that. Sh none of this shit matters anyway. I was put here for a reason, and it's to it is to influence people positively through music and through my words. That's what I'm here to do. And as long as I'm here, I'm gonna do it as often as I can. That's it. That's it. It's easy to say drop the music when you have no plan or money behind. I didn't have money when I was dropping a song a week. Despite what people think, I was sitting there in a the basement just dropping a song a week. The reason why it worked is because the music was fucking incredible. If you try to do a song a week and your music is not good, it's not going to work. <laughs> like, so people like that maybe have tried the method themselves and like, damn, it didn't work. It's probably the music. <laughs> you feel me? But I'm not, I'm no, none of y'all should allow fear of perception and, and, and fear of criticism paralyze you from doing what the fuck you actually want to do in life. You know, that shit is hell. That shit is like, it's a, it's a prison that you've put yourself into and you've locked yourself in there and you, and you have the key. And it's like, it's a battle between like your ego and your fucking soul. Like your soul's like, let me out. Your ego's like, you're going to stay right there until we figure this shit out. Until <laughs> we figure out how to navigate criticism and perception. And your soul's like, dog, what are you saying? No one gives a fuck. Like, I don't give a fuck about that. I'm just trying to be free. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. I wasn't even going to... Like this is still the first shot but. And I know it's easier said than done I'm telling you like I know I deal with it all day Not all day Every day <laughs> You know what I mean Some days more than others Maybe a day goes by where it's not so Where I'm not so in my head But like You know All my stuff Whether it's music or the book Has always kind of been uh, Me talking to myself Cause I feel like I know what to do and I know the right answers and shit and I need to like express them for, me, for myself to hear them if that makes sense you know but yeah basically get out of your own way let your soul be free 
Don't fucking be crippled by fear of criticism and perception. None of that shit matters. None of that shit matters. None of that shit matters. All right.